मॉर्निंग दिस इज पी वेंकट महेश असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट इंस्टा ऑफ एरोनॉटिकल इंजीनियर एंड वी विल कंटिन्यू विद आवर सब्जेक्ट कॉल्ड अप्लाइड थर्मोडायनेमिक्स एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी डिस्कस्ड प्रीवियसली वाज अबाउट वेपर कंप्रेशन रेफ्रिजरेशन साइकिल एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस सम हाउ व्हाट इज द एनालिसिस ऑफ how to do the analysis of vapor compression refrigeration cycle and we will see some problems uh, uh, for i mean uh, involved in solving this uh, i mean analyzing this cycle first we will see what all aspects generally they will do in analysis so the first one is uh, the refrigeration effect so what is this refrigeration effect if you can see this uh, ts diagram and ph diagram here this is the refrigeration uh, evaporation process wherein the refrigeration effect is uh, produced so here the heat is absorbed from the space to be refrigerated and uh, it is uh, compressed and the heat is rejected to the surroundings so the amount of heat that is absorbed during the process from 4 to 1 is called the refrigeration refrigerating effect so what is refrigerating effect refrigerating effect is the amount of heat absorbed by the refrigerant in its travel through the evaporator so that is the statement and what is the explanation during the evaporation process the amount of heat uh, absorbed by the refrigerant is called the refrigerating effect so what is the formula the formula is so suppose h1 here this is h1 and uh, sorry this is h1 and this is uh, h2 h4 h1 h2 h3 like that we will have now the n the h the enthalpy okay enthalpy is uh, nothing but kilojoules per kg so the change in the enthalpy gives the amount of heat uh, removed or added the change in enthalpy gives the heat added or subtracted during the process per kg of the fluid so suppose if i multiply this with uh, the mass of fluid mass flow rate then i will get uh, the total uh, heat transferred during the process because we have multiplied with the mass but if mass is not there then the heat the refrigeration refrigerating effect or heat absorbed in the evaporator is given by the change in enthalpy during the evaporation process now here h1 is on higher side h4 is on lower side so h1 minus h4 gives the amount of heat removed in the or the amount of heat absorbed in the evaporation process now here some here it is a just saturated vapor so sometimes what happened see is this can be some superheated so i say suppose this is a superheat instead of 1 it has reached 1a then from 1a to 4 is the evaporation process and from here it will be the expansion process uh, or compression process now so this amount is uh, added up uh, to the superheat okay so this is the superheat superheat means if this fluid is not a saturated vapor at the end of evaporation and it is uh, on the superheat side this is saturation liquid side I mean this is a saturated vapor line and this is saturated liquid line now this if the point of, at the end of the evaporation if the state is somewhere here then it is called superheat state and it, from here to here whatever heat is absorbed is called superheat absorbed okay and and from here to here from 4 to here 1 this called the latent heat of vaporization and say suppose if it is before this then it is called subcooling effect 
okay so this is all we have discussed now here what is what are involved here the latent heat of vaporization and sometimes possibility of superheat is there so both will be included in the refrigerating effect the next one is mass of refrigerant okay mass of refrigerant circulated in the cycle okay so what is the mass of refrigerant circulated by dividing the amount of heat by the refrigeration effect okay so what is the the refrigeration effect say suppose if it is 1 tonne refrigeration effect okay if it is 1 tonne refrigeration effect per uh, per second okay 1 tonne refrigeration effect per second then the value is 14000 if i divide that with uh, the q evaporator so what is q evaporate we have already discussed in the previous slide it is h1 minus h4 since uh, that is what we what we want is uh, in hours okay mass flow rate so this is kilojoule per kg and uh, this is in tonne per hour it is not tonne per second it is a tonne per hour so if i want to convert this into tonne per tonne per second it what we have to do we have to divide that with a 3600 so because 1 hour is equal to 60 into 60 seconds so what we are doing is 1 tonne per hour divided by 1 hour uh, the second equivalent uh, equivalent of 1 uh, hour 3600 it gives the tonne per second divided by the heat removed okay the change in enthalpy so that is that gives us the kilojoule per kg tonne okay so kilojoule per so kg per second mass flow rate kg per second tonne so per 1 ton of refrigeration how much mass flow rate is circulated so that is what is called the mass of refrigerated refrigerator refrigerant circulated okay so the next one is theoretical piston displacement so what is theoretical piston displacement we have say suppose this is our compressor so the compressor moves from the this is the t dc top dead center and this is b dc bottom dead center now the from here to here whatever movement is called that is the theoretical dis piston displacement so how to get the theoretical piston displacement so theoretical piston displacement you can see here may be found by multiplying the mass of refrigerant to be circulated okay by the specific volume of the refrigerant gas so what we have to do we know the specific volume specific volume is ma specific volume what is specific volume it is uh, the volume occupied per kg okay it is a uh, volume occupied per kg of fuel uh, kg of uh, the liquid is called the specific volume now if i multiply this uh, the mass what i will get i will get the volume so in the previous slide what we have seen that this is uh, nothing but kg per second tonne okay now if i multiply this with uh, meter cube per kg what i will get i will get meter cube per second tonne so what is this this is a, i will write it here again in the bracket we have kg per second tonne and the specific volume is meter cube per kg what i will get kg kg will get cancel i will get meter cube per second tonne so per ton of refrigeration 
what is the theoretical displacement how to get it if i multiply the mass flow mass of refrigerant circulated per second with the specific volume i will get the theoretical piston displacement now what is the theoretical power required so what we have seen the mass of refrigerant circulated and volume or the theoretical displacement of the pump that we have found now what we have to find we have to find what is the power that is required per ton of refrigeration okay so per ton of refrigeration now here what is the work uh, input what is the work input during the compression process it is from 1 to 2 so it is equal to h1 is smaller and h2 is greater so the difference will give the amount of work that is uh, taken by the compressor so what is the amount of work it is uh, h2 minus h1 it is uh, kilojoule per kg so what is this it is a uh, kilojoule per kg now if i multiply this with uh, kg per second mass flow rate is uh, kg per second what i will get i will get kilo uh, this kg kg will get kilojoule uh, per second nothing but kilowatt kilojoule per second is nothing but kilowatt so if i multiply this uh, mass flow rate of the refrigerant so mass flow rate of refrigerant is kg per second so if i multiply the mass flow rate of the uh, refrigerant with the change in enthalpy during the compression process i will get the power required in kilowatts so suppose previously what we have seen it is uh, following a isentropic process so now if the process is not an isentropic process rather than it is some polytropic process and it is governed by the equation pv power n is constant then what is the power required so what is the work now work is nothing but n by n minus 1 into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 this formula we have already studied in our in uh, previous semester that is called thermodynamics now from thermodynamics we are taking this formula and the formula is n upon n minus 1 into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 so this uh, pressure volume pressure and volume after compression pressure and volume before compression so the product of pressure and volume after compression minus the product of pressure and volume before compression into n by n minus 1 what is this n it is the power in this characteristic equation this is the equation which is governing the compression process and here it can be gamma okay sometimes it can be gamma so it the adiabatic means gamma now here if it is not an adiabatic process then we have to take that and whatever n is given in the problem now again what it is there it is a new newton meter per kg or kilojoule per kg okay kilojoule per kg it will be this is kilojoule per kg now uh, sorry newton meter per kg if i want uh, kilojoule per kg how to write kilojoule per kg so it is a newton meter if i want to put here kilojoule i have to divide with uh, 1000 so if i divide with 1000 it will be kilojoule per kg newton meter per kg or kilojoule per kg okay into 10 power minus 3 kilojoule per kg either it is newton meter per kg or into 10 power minus 3 kilojoule per kg now if i multiply this with mass what is mass here again mass is nothing but kg per second so kilojoule per kg into kg per second gives us kilowatt so m into n by n minus 1 into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 into 10 power minus 3 or 1 upon 10 by 3 10 power 3 into kilo i mean kilowatts so this is what is 
the power required so here it is given p is in newton per meter square if p is newton per meter square volume is meter cube per kg so what we will get newton per meter square into meter cube per kg what i will get i will get newton meter per kg so that is the analysis how we got this units so the pressure is in newton per meter square volume is meter cube per kg and mass is mass flow rate is kg per second it will give us the kilowatt units for the power required if the process is a polytropic and it is governed by pv power n is equal to constant now what is the heat rejected okay so it, this should be here if it is here it will be okay now what is the heat rejected to the compressor cooling water so here the compressor is having a high temperature fluid so since the compressor is having a high temperature fluid what happens is the walls will get heated up so in order to maintain the walls at some uh, moderate temperature are under control the, in order to keep the temperature of the water uh, of the wall cylinder walls under control what we have to do the cylinder wall should be uh, surrounded by water jackets the cylinder wall should be surrounded by water jackets and that is called the cooling water jacket so what is this cooling water jacket doing it is taking away heat uh, from the walls so what is the amount of heat that is taken away by the cooling water jacket so that is given by the polytropic work minus the change in enthalpy during the compression process the polytropic work and change in enthalpy during the compression gives us the heat rejected to the compressor uh, cooling jacket now what is the heat removed this final one is heat removed in the condenser or heat removed through the condenser so what is that it is again this nothing but the change in enthalpy during the condensing process so what is the condensation process condensation process is nothing but 2 to 3 and the change in enthalpy during this process is nothing but it is a h2 on higher side and h3 on lower side so it is nothing but h3 minus h h2 minus h3 so h2 is higher h3 is lower h2 minus h3 gives the amount of uh, change in enthalpy during the condensation process again if i multiply that with mass flow rate i will get the heat removed through the condenser as kilojoule per second now we will see some problems two problems today and we will wind up this session so what is the first problem the first problem is stated like this an ammonia refrigerator works between 25 degrees centigrade to minus 10 degrees centigrade so this is 25 degrees centigrade and this is minus 10 degrees centigrade lower temperature is minus 10 degrees centigrade and higher temperature is 25 degrees centigrade what our refrigerator is doing is it is taking heat from the lower temperature and giving it to the higher temperature surroundings so the vapor being dry at the end of isentropic compression so here instead of this point is specifying the point 2 okay so so this is a uh, the cycle is little different why here the at the end of evaporator it is not a saturated vapor it is a, a wet vapor okay so, but after the compression it is a, a dry saturated vapor so it is the saturated vapor at the end of the isentropic compression so point 2 is 
a dry state there is no under cooling effect so under cooling is not there means three is a saturated liquid there is no under cooling effect that is the meaning there is no under cooling effect of the uh, liquid ammonia means the liquid at the end of the condensation is a saturated liquid the liquid is expanded through a throttle valve after leaving the condenser so after leaving the condenser directly the expansion process is there through the throttle valve calculate the refrigeration effect per kg of ammonia so refrigeration effect per kg of ammonia so mass flow rate is not given so everything we have to calculate per kg of ammonia circulate and we have to find what is the theoretical cop coefficient of performance of the unit so two things we have to find out one is refrigeration effect and the other one is theoretical coefficient of performance of this cycle so what we have to do for this temperatures okay the temperature 25 and minus 10 degree centigrade we have to find what is the hf okay what is hfg and what is sf from the ammonia tables so we have to find what is hf what is hfg and what is sf or you can sometimes you can directly find out what is hg and here sfg and sg okay all these things will be given in the tables so here what i am doing is i am taking only hfg instead of hg okay and i am also not taking sfg so suppose if sfg is not known and if sg is not known how to find the solution that we have to see here so what are the things given latent uh, liquid heat liquid heat means the enthalpy of saturated liquid and latent heat means uh, the change in enthalpy during this evaporation process says so, uh, from here from here to here from liquid line to uh, vapor line the change in enthalpy the difference in enthalpy is called the latent heat and generally it is defined by hfg what is this h suffix fg okay and this is uh, hf and this is sf entropy of the fluid uh, liquid or flu, uh, uh, enthalpy of the liquid and this is uh, uh, so entropy of the liquid and this is uh, enthalpy of the liquid now if i am writing hf hfg and sf it is not for uh, it is not related to any state of our cycle but it is uh, related to the temperature so it is uh, at minus 10 degrees and it is at uh, 25 degrees so that we have to take carefully so for uh, at 25 degrees centigrade we need these properties at minus 10 degrees centigrade we need these properties once we have these properties how to solve the problem now what is the temperature temperature of 0.3 and temperature of 0.2 they both are same that is equal to 25 degrees centigrade and temperature of 0.4 and temperature of 0.1 they both are equal to minus 10 degrees centigrade so if i want to convert this into kelvin i have to simply add 273 so 25 plus 273 is nothing but 298 minus 10 plus 273 is nothing but 263 kelvin now what is this uh, h3 the enthalpy at point 3 the enthalpy at point 3 is nothing but h3 how do you have to get it what is the state at point 3 it is the it is a saturated liquid state what is the temperature the temperature is uh, 25 degrees centigrade here it is 25 it is minus 10 degrees centigrade 
at 25 degrees centigrade what is the enthalpy of the saturated liquid so it is 298.9 kilojoule per kg so here we know what is that we know what is hf at 2 temperature 2 okay hf at temperature 2 so and sometimes they will write simply hf 2 okay hf at a temperature 2 is equal to h3 and here the, this is isenthalpic process the process from 3 to 4 is isenthalpic process so h3 is equal to h4 so we have the enthalpy at point 3 we have a enthalpy at point 4 and what else is known we also know what is the entropy entropy at point 3 s3 at point 3 what is the entropy it is nothing but the liquid entropy and i can write this here as hf2 oh, sorry sf this is entropy of liquid so it is sf2 so the entropy of liquid the saturated liquid at temperature 2 that is 25 degrees centigrade gives us s3 okay this point s point 3 what is the entropy point 3 what is the enthalpy so what else we know do we know what is entropy or enthalpy at point 2 do we know what is enthalpy uh, en entropy and enthalpy at point 1 we don't know that so what we have to do we have to find out them. so what else what are conditions that we uh, that are uh, known so the point at temperature 1 at temperature 1 what is the enthalpy of the liquid hf1 so that is equal to 135.37 what is the hfg per hfg at temperature 1 that is minus 10 degrees centigrade so that is equal to 1 to 97.68 kilojoule per kg now what is the entropy of the saturated liquid at a temperature 1 so that is equal to 0 0.5443 kilojoule per kg kelvin so how to find what is sfg so sfg is equal to hfg divided by the temperature so if i divide this with this temperature i will get uh, if i divide this with this temperature i will get the entropy difference between the saturated liquid and the saturated vapor so these are the given conditions already we have discussed now we have to see what are the what how to find the entropy and enthalpy at point 2 so at point 2 what is entropy entropy is nothing but sf plus sfg sf plus sfg i will write here So, S2, S2 is equal to Sf, en uh, entropy of the liquid, saturated liquid at a temperature 2 plus Sfg F at a temperature 2, I will get, if I add these two, I will get what is entropy at point 2. But we don't know what is uh, this entropy. We know only the HFG. So what I have to do? I have to divide that with temperature 2. If I divide that, I will get this value. 
So what are the values you can see here? You can quickly substitute and find out what uh, these values. What is SF2? SF. So SF2 is nothing but this one. And that is equal to 1.1242, 1.1242 plus what is HFG2, it is a 1166.94 divided by what is the temperature, temperature is a 298 Kelvin. If I simplify this, I will get uh, this answer. Okay. Now, what about the enthalpy at point 2? It is also similar way you have to find out. Again, you can see here HF at, at temperature 2 and HFG plus at temperature 2. If I add up, I will get what is H2. HG is equal to 2 HF plus HFG. Okay, this is uh, one equation we have to remember. Or HFG is equal to HG minus HF. So, this is another equation. So, if I know HFG and HF, I can find out what is HG. Or if I know what these two, I can find out HFG. Like this, like this I have to use. And what else we know? The another equation that we have to remember is SFG is equal to HFG divided by temperature. Okay, for a given temperature, you know what is uh, okay. I will write in expansion form also SG minus SF for a given temperature is equal to Hg minus Hf at that given temperature divided by temperature. So, this is a, another equation that we should remember so that we can find out the values that are not known from the given known values. So, we know now this at this point we know what is entropy, what is enthalpy and at this point we know what is enthalpy. At this point, we know what is entropy as well as enthalpy. Now, how to find the entropy and enthalpy at this point? So, the process 1 to 2 is isentropic process. The process 1 to 2 is isentropic process. So, isentropic process means S1 is equal to S2. So, the same S1 must be equal to S2. So, this is the S1 value as well. This is S2 as well as S1. Now, how to find the enthalpy at this point? Okay. We don't know enthalpy of at this point. We know only entropy at that point. So, how to find the entropy uh, enthalpy at that point? So, for that what we need is uh, the dryness fraction. This is called the x1 is the dryness fraction. So, if I know the dryness fraction, I can find out the enthalpy at that point. Is substituting in this formula because I know what is HFG1, I know what is HF1. If I know what is the dryness fraction, I can find out what is the enthalpy at point 1. So, for that what I have to do? I know what is SF1. This is SF1. And I know what is HFG1 divided by temperature also I know. And what is S1? As I already discussed, S1 is equal to S2. Okay. So, SF1 is uh, this value and HFG HFG is nothing but 1297.68 divided by temperature it is uh, two sixty three. If I cancel this I will get four point nine three four into this dryness fraction and this must be equal to what is that it is a uh, five point zero four. 
So if I equate these two, what I will get? If I simplify this, then x1 is equal to 5.04 minus 05, 0 0.5443 divided by 4.937. If I simplify this, I will get this answer. So this is the dryness fraction. Now once I know this dryness fraction, I can substitute this and find out what is the enthalpy at a point 1. How to find that? I know what is HF1. HF1 is nothing but 135.37. And what is X1 plus 0 0.91? What is HFG? HFG is also known that is 1297.68. So if I sub simplify, substitute all these values here and simplify, I will get this value. So I know the enthalpy and entropy at this point. So for analyzing this uh, refrigeration cycle, I should know what, is, what are the enthalpy values at the four points. So enthalpy at point one I know, enthalpy at uh, enthalpy at point two I know, enthalpy at point four, four I know, and enthalpy at point three I know. So using these values, I can find out what is the COP and the refrigeration effect produced. So what is the refrigeration effect per kg of ammonia? So as we have already discussed, the refrigeration effect per kg of the refrigerant is nothing but the change in enthalpy during the evaporation process. So what is the change in enthalpy during evaporation process? It is nothing but H1 minus H4. So what is H1? H1 is 1316.26. What is H4? Minus 298.9. If I subtract these two, I will get this value. So this is the refrigerating, uh, refrigeration effect or refrigerating effect per kg of ammonia. This we should remember. So if the total refrigeration effect is required, then what I have to do? I have to multiply this with the mass flow rate of ammonia. If I multiply with mass flow rate of ammonia, I will get the total refrigeration effect. If I don't multiply with the mass flow, mass flow rate, I will get the refrigeration effect per kg of ammonia. Next one is coefficient of performance or COP. So what is coefficient of performance? It is nothing but the refrigerating effect divided by work done. Okay. It is nothing but the refrigerating effect divided by work done. So what is the refrigerating effect? It is a H1 minus H4. H1 minus H4. This is a refrigerating effect. So what is the work done? It is nothing but H2 minus H1. H2 minus H1 divided by H, uh, sorry, the H1 minus H4 divided by H2 minus H1 will give the coefficient of performance. So I know what is H1. H1 is 1316.26. What is H4? It is nothing but 298.9. And what else I know? I know what is H2. H2 value is 14.8. 65.8 minus what is H1? H1 is this one. So it is 1316.26. So 1316.26. If I simplify this, I will get the COP as 6.8. So the, uh, the process is very simple, but we should know what are these. Uh, what is HF, what is H, uh, HG, what is SF, what is SFG and using these values for the, for the given temperature conditions, we should find out what are the enthalpy values at point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. If I know the enthalpy values at point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, I can simply substitute this in this value, so formula and I can find out what are the coefficient of performance and what is refrigeration effect 
or sometimes they may ask what is work done like this i can find out so this is about the first problem we will see the second problem so in second problem it is given an ammonia refrigerator an ammonia refrigerator produces 28 ton or 28 metric ton of ice 28 ton of ice from and at 0 degree centigrade in 24 hours okay so it is a 28 ton is the re refrigeration uh, capacity okay the refrigerator capacity is 28 ton of uh, uh, ice okay 28 ton e now the temperatures what is the temperatures at which the refrigeration cycle is working so the self cycle is working between 25 degree centigrade and minus 15 degree centigrade so the vapor is dry saturated at the end of the compression it is similar to the previous problem the vapor vapor is dry saturated at the end of the compression and assume this coefficient of performance to be 62% of the theoretical value so the coefficient of performance actual coefficient of performance is only 62% of the theoretical value calculate the power required to drive the compressor we have to find what is the power required to drive the compressor and the latent heat of ice is can be taken as 335 kJ per kg so this is the question given now we have to look into the ammonia refrigeration tables in ammonia refrigeration tables corresponding to temperature 25 and corresponding to temperature of minus 15 we can find out what is hf what is uh, hg and what is S, uh, sf and what is sg hf is enthalpy of the saturated liquid hg is enthalpy of the saturated vapor sf is entropy of the saturated liquid and sg is entropy of saturated vapor so if all these values are known it is much easier than the previous problem we will see how to solve this problem now the temperatures t at point 2 and point 3 it is equal to t2 and that is equal to 25 degree centigrade 25 degree centigrade plus 273 gives us 298 kelvin now at point 1 and point 4 we have a constant temperature and the constant temperature is nothing but minus 15 degree centigrade the minus 15 degree centigrade if i add 273 i will get 258 kelvin now at point 3 it is a saturated liquid condition at point 3 it is a saturated liquid condition why there is no mention of subcooling in the process okay so here the end of the compression it is dry but there is no mention of subcooling if no mention of subcooling is there what we have to consider is it is a a saturated liquid at the end and end of the condensation before condensation it is saturated vapor after condensation it is saturated liquid so it is easy for us to solve this problem now at point 3 the enthalpy is equal to the hf at 25 degree centigrade what is hf at 25 degree centigrade it is nothing but 298 kJ per kg now 3 to 4 we know enthalpy at point 3 now 3 to 4 is an ice enthalpic process so h4 is equal to h3 so h4 is also known now what is the 
point two. Point two is nothing but a dry saturated vapor at twenty five degrees centigrade. The dry saturated vapor at twenty five degrees centigrade means it is a Hg. Hg value at twenty five degrees centigrade. So it is equal to one four one four six five point eight four kilojoules per kg. So we know what is a enthalpy at a point two. We know at point three. We know at point four. We know at point two. We have to find what is the enthalpy at point one. For this, what are what all are given? Reg uh, we know. At temperature T1, at temperature minus 15 degrees centigrade, we know what is HF, we know what is HG, we know what is SF, and we know what is SG. At point, uh, at temperature one, this this is related to temperature, and these are related to the points in the cycle. So, for easy understanding, I have given like this. The in textbook. They may might have given in a different manner, but uh, this is the easiest way to understand without any confusion. So one to uh, sorry HF at temperature one, HG at temperature one, SF at temperature one, SG at temperature one. These four values are known. Using these four values, what I have to do is I have to find what is a The enthalpy at point one. So, is there anything else we know? The the process one to two is an isentropic process. The process one to two is isentropic process. So, S one is equal to S two. So, entropy is known. So, entropy is known. Using this entropy, I have to find out what is the enthalpy. How to do that? The same manner. We have to find what is the dryness fraction at point one. Now, what is S <coughs> one? S one is nothing but S two. This is the S two L, and we have to know what is S F at temperature one, S F G at temperature one, and from that we can find out what is the dryness fraction at Uh, uh, at point one, so the dryness fraction is corresponding to the point. Okay, SF and SFG are corresponding to the temperatures. Okay, now what is SFG? SFG is the difference between the entropy of vapor and the entropy of the liquid at the given temperatures. So these two values are also given: SG and SF. <coughs> SF value at point one is nothing but so SF at point one is uh, is equal to zero point four five seven two. Okay, SF at point at temperature one is nothing but zero point four five seven two. That we have to remember. So it is a uh, SF. This is SF at point two. We need SF at point one. It is zero point four five seven two kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So this SF at point one is known. Substitute that value. SG at point one is known. This is the value. SF at point one is known. This is the value. If I substitute that and equate this to S two Y S one is equal to S two because the process is isentropic process. If I substitute this five point zero three nine one here, what I I will get I I can get what is the value of X one the dryness fraction at point one. Now using this dryness fraction, I can find out what is enthalpy. How to find H F plus X into H F G. H F at temperature one plus X one, the dryness fraction of two point one into H F G at temperature one. So if I take this, I can substitute this H F one. H F one value is this. H F H G value is this, and 
x1 i have found out as 0.9 so i can find out what is the enthalpy value so i know what is enthalpy at 0.1 i know enthalpy at 0.2 i know it at enthalpy at 0.3 and i know enthalpy at 0.4 using these four values i have to find out what is the theoretical cop so here what all are required for me i know i should know what is the enthalpy at point 3a4 i should know what is enthalpy at point 2 and i should know at enthalpy at point 1 so using this i can find out what is the C theoretical cop so what theoretical cop means the refrigeration effect the refrigerating effect is h1 minus h4 divided by the compressor work that is h2 minus h1 So H1 minus H4 divided by H2 minus H1. So what are the values? They are 1295.12 minus H4 is 298.9 divided by 1465.84 minus 1295.12. So if I simplify this, I will get 5.8 uh, 5.835 in the question it is given the actual cop is only 62% of the theoretical cop so theoretical cop is known as 5.835 just we have calculated now using the if i multiply that with uh, 0.62 into 0.62 if i do i will get the actual cop as 3.618 using this actual cop i have to find what is the <coughs> what is the work done so ice produced from and at this is the refrigerating capacity of the plant so the what is the refrigerating capacity of the plant it is a 28 ton e so 28 ton e means it is a 0.324 kg per second 28 tons it is using it is it can make only 28 ton e per day so what is 28 ton 28000 kg 28000 kg per day per day means 24 hours and 1 hour is equal to 3600 so if i simplify this i will get 0.324 kg per second so this is the amount of ice it can produce per second so what is the latent heat of ice the latent heat of ice is uh, <coughs> it can it is given as 335 kJ per kg so this is the value if i multiply these two i will get what is the actual refrigeration effect produced so actual refrigeration effect produced is equal to the latent heat of ice into the mass of ice uh, that can be produced per second if i multiply these two i will get 108.54 kJ per second so this is the actual refrigeration effect produced by the cycle actual cop is equal to actual refrigeration divided by the work done by the compressor uh, now what is the work required by the compressor i know what is the refrigeration effect this is a 108.54 divided by work done we don't know but we know what is that we know only the actual cop that is equal to 3.618 this is already we have found out so this if i simplify this the work done is equal to this will go this side and this will come this side so the work done is equal to 3.618 108 by 3.618 and that is equal to 30 kJ per kJ per second or kilowatt this is the power required this is the actual power required for driving the compressor so this is uh, what we have discussed till now 
we have discussed two problems and we have seen the what are various parameters that are used for mathematical analysis of the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So the important points that we should remember are like this. So we should identify for analyzing the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, we need to know what is the enthalpy at point 1, what is the enthalpy at point 2, what is the enthalpy at point 3 and what is the enthalpy at point 4. Okay. In the question, they will give the operating temperatures T1 and T2. So, if the operating temperatures in T1 and T2 are given, we have to go look into the refrigeration tables corresponding to the temperature T1 and corresponding to the temperature T2. What are the values of HF and HF, uh, HF, HG, SF, SG from that table? If I can find out these values, I can manipulate and I can find out what are the values of enthalpy at 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, using those uh, values, what we can do? We can uh, com compute whatever is uh, asked in the question. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.